Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris, and if you haven't seen my previous videos, I'm a real world flying instructor, and I was previously qualified to fly the Hawk T1. This is the Just Flight model for Microsoft Flight Simulator, the Hawk T1A. You can see it here in the 208 Squadron Centenary livery available on flightsim.to. And we're loaded up at Echo Golf November Mike, which is Leeds Bradford Airport, uh, made by Orbex. All the products I use today, I'll put a link in the description below. If you haven't seen my Mac Loop video, be sure to check that out. I'll put a link above for you. This is going to be the sequel to that video, and it's going to expand on the planning and the checks and the calculations required for flying medium level into low level. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe. I'm planning to do a giveaway in the next couple of weeks. So if you subscribe, you'll be one of the first to find out about that. So this video is going to be covering how to plan and fly a route through the Lake District. So here's the plan. You'll notice the chart looks a little bit more realistic. It's not sky vector. This is actually a half mil scale UK VFR chart and it's current as of three days ago. The software it comes with is a little bit clunky. I'll put a link in the description below and I plan to do maybe another video on how to use that. Suffice to say that we can drag and drop waypoints. We can get nautical miles and our magnetic heading, which is the key point. It doesn't load up time on here. So I've used a root root card, which it does produce root cards, but then you can add comments to the right hand side. So all I've done is once I enter low level, I've just added up the cumulative time on the right hand side. And so that's the root card that you can get from this software. From Leeds Bradford Airport, we're going to take off, take a left hand turn heading 280. We're going to change our heading uh, here to enter low level at Windermere, or Lake Windermere. This is the beginning of the Lake District. We're going to fly low level down to the Appleby Valley. Mercedes Junction is here, and then we're going to head directly, pretty much directly east, and then recover to RF Leeming, which is another base that's well known for hosting uh, Hawk T1s. Uh, a quick dit on how I've planned this. So you'll notice the dog leg, the most fuel efficient way would obviously be going direct. But there is a VORDME down here called Pole Hill 1121, I believe. Uh, so I've decided to head almost west, intercept a radial outbound, which is the 318 radial. And I can follow that radial into low level. So I'm pretty much guaranteed to find my entry point. So one last thing to add before we go. This is a work in progress build of the Hawk T1. You may have seen the change log uh, recently released. So it's got some exciting new features coming. Um, but like I say, this is work in progress. Just like we're kind enough to allow me onto the testing team, but I did pay for this model. I'm a paying customer. Things you might see that are subtly different though. One is the EFB can now be put on the right-hand panel here. So it's slightly easy to see. And two, which is my favorite thing ever, we have our stopwatch. I'll make sure to wind it up because it's not battery powered. Start, stop and reset on the right hand side. So we'll use that for our timing. So I've already set myself up uh, on the 318 radial is set here. I've set this to ILS. The ILS panel is set to VOR and the VOR for pole hill is entered as 1121. So that is all set up. The green arrow is pointing in the right direction already. Okay, I've turned the audio back on. We're ready to go. In three, two, one hack. I'll start my left turn now. Uh, so 4,000 fleet climb to 12,000. The re reason I'm climbing to 12,000 is because I know my medium level leg is 55 miles. If we times that by two and add a couple of zeros on, that makes 11,000 feet. And if I'm heading west under IFR rules, hemispheric altitudes, I'd be flying at 12,000. If I was VFR, uh, I would be flying at 12,500 feet. But we'll say we've got a service from air traffic, so we're going for 12,000 feet on a westerly heading. Planning data, climbing to 12,000, it's going to take about two minutes here, plus about a minute for the takeoff and the turn. About three minutes to top a climb. And we've had two minutes on the clock. 
Once I level, I'm going to accelerate up to 360 knots or about 0.65. And at this altitude, that'll give me close enough to seven miles a minute. You can see here that the uh, VOR pointer is moving around quickly. We're at 12 miles, 11 miles now from Pole Hill. So when that green line lines up with our course bar, our deviation index will centralize and will be turning to the right. I'm going to anticipate this turn a little bit. It's fine to cut the corner slightly. I know I'm slightly right of track. Now you could probably do that slightly better. This is a means to an end. So as we cruise this way, let's see if I can find my map. What did I do with that? Here we go. So here's our map. We've currently made this turn. We're slightly right of track. You can see the deviation bar is coming in nicely. So we're cruising up here towards an area called Morecambe Bay. So this is Morecambe. This is Morecambe Bay. The high ground you see here is the high ground beneath. Didn't mean to hit the microphone. That's the high ground down there. So I know my medium level leg into low level is going to take about nine minutes. We're at five and a half minutes now. There's Morecambe Bay and the lake's going to be on the nose. Of course, deviation bar is kind of central. Right, I promised you some proper in-flight checks. So pre-descent checks. I'm going to check that the fuel is sufficient. We're expecting to enter low level at 1100. We burned a little bit more than expected. We'll just bear that in mind. We're going slightly slow, so I've powered up. But the fuel is fine for now. Instruments, I'm checking they are erect and synchronized, so the ADIs are, or the AIs are uh, the right way up. The headings match, we're in slave, and you can check the uh, magnetic compass up here again. Radios, we can talk to a traffic and request a descent. We can check the low level frequency for the descent. Altimeters set for the lowest, we're going to use 1013 because that's what it is at the moment. Uh, you can set the demist as required. If you're cruising at cold altitude, you might want to set this to demist to pre-warm the canopy so that when you go into low level, you go from cold air into warm air, you don't want the canopy to mist up. So you might want to demist. And you check the safety altitude. I can't remember what the safety altitude is down at uh, down at the Lake District. It's fairly high, but we can see the ground, so I'm not too worried about uh, the altitude that I'm descending down to. So I think now is a fairly decent time to start our descent, so we'll take the autopilot off. And we'll start down. In the descent, I'm going to leave the power set. I'll put the nose down to about uh, about there. We'll do for now. And I'm going to fly this about 0.75. You can accelerate to 0.8 and then hold 420. You can do any number of things, but this is what we'll choose to do. So we're 8 minutes and 20 on the time. And we're looking forward for a lake. I can see the course deviation is slightly to the right, which means I'm slightly left of track. Looking ahead, I'm scanning for any areas. I can see there's an inlet there that flows up and there's a lake just on the nose. That might well be our lake. Here's our Morecambe Bay. Here's that inlet that we can see down the left hand side here. And that leads into our lake. At this point, I could keep the clock running all the way there, or I can stop it. We're going to restart it once we get to our low-level entry point. Next set of checks for low level will be our VLAST checks. So our visor would be down, our lights are all on, our altimeters are set, our radios we can talk and check in with the low-level frequency, our squawk can be 7001. I'm not sure why that squawk keeps changing. I swear I set it 7001, but we'll leave it for now. And we can note the time. So I said about 9 minutes. I 8 minutes and 30, so I like that. I stop, reset, and I'll stand by to hack. Okay, so my first heading is going to be 359. Let's call it north, shall we? Here's my entry point. My stopwatch is reset. I'm at 420 knots. I'll squeeze myself down to 250 feet. So my heading is good, my speed is good. Three, two, one. Hack. Clock is running. 
So I should have done a pre-hat check there for my heading, but let's do a post one. So I'm heading 359 down the valley. That's confirmed. My speed is slightly slow, so I'll pick that up to 420 knots. The time of my next event is going to be four minutes. So I've planned this by adding up the legs. I've kept it quite simple, but I know it'll take me about four minutes to get to the other end of the Lake District. So the trick to flying this leg is not crashing into the water. It's really hard to see how high you are based on, well, there's not many uh, features to go by. So crews would just use the trees left and right to judge their altitude, or should I say height. It'd be better with the rad out, but this one doesn't have it. So we'll cruise out north of the lake. This is Ambleside, I believe. We're going to take a left just here. So I'll move to the right hand side. I'll anticipate this turn because it's quite sharp. Power has to come up and turning. About 4G. And a turn to the right. If you watch my Mac loop videos, you'll remember CAD East and West where the photographers sit. This is the equivalent. The photographers will sit on the left or right hand side, depending on where the sunlight is and take photos as you fly through. This lake, I'm not sure of the name, but the town of Thirlmere is just to the north and east of it, so we'll call it Thirlmere Lake. Time looks like about 2 minutes and 10. I'm not sure about the funny surroundings of my trees. Never mind. Okay, we'll follow to the left-hand side. Anything you see hill-wise will follow left. To the north of us, behind the ridge you can see, behind this ridge, is a town called Keswick. We'll be taking a left before we get there. I wonder if there's a big mast on the top of this hill, but I don't think it's been modelled. Looks brilliant in the sunset. Well, the setting sun, should I say. I'll take a right here. As we flow to the north again. So we are at looks like three minutes and 30 seconds. We want to be four minutes at the end of the lake that we can see in front of us. Time for a pre-hat. So my next heading is going to be 061. My next airspeed, as long as I don't have to adjust for timing errors, is going to be 420 knots. Uh, and that is pretty much it. It looks like we're not going to quite make the end of the lake. So what I'm going to do is turn at four minutes. And there's four minutes. I judge that to be about a mile early. So bear that in mind. 4G. So on 061, we've turned early. Now the standard closing angle, that is to say, if I took this amount of degrees after one minute, I'll have moved one mile left or right of track is about eight degrees. So I'm going to take 15 degrees left of track. I'm going to hold that for about a minute. And then that should, be, that should put me back on course without too much of a time penalty. That's about a minute. Turn right onto one, uh, 061 and then we'll cruise and hopefully our next event at 6 minutes and 20 will be a motorway and a service station. 
Now I don't hold much hope for the service station, but we'll certainly see the motorway. That's 5 minutes 30, so we've got about 45 seconds until we get to the road. And the next heading will be a uh, 146. Here's our road. The time is uh, 15 seconds, 6 minutes and 15. Climbed a bit in the turn. So we now check our headings, 146. No need to correct for wind. We check our map to confirm 146. We know the time was about five seconds early. So I'm going to take my speed back to four ten knots. And my next event is going to be at uh, eight minutes and five, which I believe is Centre Parks. So this valley is called uh, Appleby Valley. It's not officially named that, but uh, that's what we call it. I'm going to go around this high ground. Uh, Appleby Valley, because there's a town of Appleby to the south, south and east. There's a famous horse fair that goes on there once once or twice a year, I think. We try and avoid that so we don't spook the, uh, spook the horses. It looks like we're 7 minutes and 30, so at 8 minutes and 20, I'm hoping to find centre parks. Now, from my knowledge, I know it's on the top of a bit of high ground and it's surrounded by trees. So that is a good starter. Reference, it's here. There's Penrith, Appleby's over this side, and here's centre parks. This is not so much a turn point. I know I'm still heading 146 after this, but we can check our timing and see if it's working out. There's centre parks over there. So we are still carrying, in fact it's 8.05, so actually, I think we might be slightly late now, so I'm gonna put us back at 4.20 knots. So my next event is going to be at 11 minutes and 30. It's going to be the Mercedes Junction so here's the Mercedes Junction. Oh, by the way, this is quite uh, this is quite typical that we'd be looking ahead like this, uh, picking out the features and the threats and the high ground climbing as required. But then we need to pick the map up and have a look. So we'll bring it up next to our eye line so we can see where we're going and just flit our eyes across to see what's on the map. So Mercedes Junction, 11 minutes 30, and we're just turning left onto 096. You can see here that we kind of cut over the high ground to get into the valley, whereas if we turned left, we'd hit the valley entrance, which I believe is just there. And that's what we're going to do. So confidence wise, you pick out some features from the map. I know there's a road that goes down this uh, valley and the river is a good standout feature. You really get a sense that even though we're flying at seven miles every minute, 420 knots, there's still plenty of time to sit back and relax as long as you plan ahead. There's 11 minutes and 10 seconds. Here is the Mercedes Junction. Checking right for any traffic and starting our turn. Of course, we roll out, the speed is good. I'm not going to adjust it. In fact, maybe I'll fly 400 knots, see if we can fix it a little bit. Uh, the heading 096 while we're following this valley. So my next event down here is going to be at 14 minutes. And that's going to be south of Beam, a town called Leyburn. Which is why the valley's got its name, Leyburn Valley. So 
We've got uh, 45 seconds until we get to Leyburn, and then we're recovering to RF Leeming. And let's call that a beam Leyburn now. And we're three seconds early. I will take that. Now we need to find an airfield. The 300 knots will do for now. We're looking for the A1, which might be this road going up and down. And I believe this is RF Leeming. So roughly initial, it's a left-hand brake. We'll go into 500 feet. We break in, blow 200, gear, flap. So from here, I'll go flap to down, hold my power, hold 150 knots, about 40 degrees bank because I'm wide. and then pull the power to be about 130 knots by 300 feet. And allowing the speed to trickle down to my threshold speed, which would be 117. So if you're still with me, thank you for sticking around. Please throw in a like if you found this at all useful or enjoyable. Even better, throw in a subscribe so that you get up-to-date notifications of when my latest videos come out. But until the next time, take care and fly safe.